Okay everyone, welcome. This is a video to help my European counterparts that are start that are decided that during this pandemic you have had basically enough of just sitting around and you want to do something perhaps a little bit more physical with your outdoor activities. And this is for those that decide, hey, I'm going to pick up American football. If you click on the link that comes up here, it'll lead to a playlist that is full of the football 101. I do not have captions for the, for other languages. Um, I haven't even put them in for English, but if you guys are able to understand this, you'll be able to understand that. I use a whiteboard. It helps. Uh, for this video, I'm going to go over the gear that you're going to be wearing because most of you are like, yeah, I play rugby. Yeah, I play foosball, football, <laughs> all that stuff that you, you know, talk about or soccer in the weird places or you've played volleyball so you have the knee pads or you know you've gone inline skating and you have like the elbow pads and the helmet and this is this is much more involved if you've played ice hockey however you're very, you, this is right up your alley i'm going to show you what they are what their function is and where you how you put them on the first thing to get out of the way this is a what i use is a combination seven pad girdle it's you can find these all over Amazon, and you can also find them, you know, you can probably find five pads, three pads. Um, you're pretty much, like, what you're going to get for a girdle is at least three pads, which are these top ones. You can go down here past the thigh pads, and you can get five, and then just use the knee pads that come separately. They're like, and they just go on your legs. Like, you just slide this on. Just like this. It is intended to be tight. Okay. This is why I call them thigh pads, knee pads. They look a bit weird, but you'll see as this goes on. To cover this, to cover this sort of stuff up, you're gonna have basically generalized football pants. In the Netherlands, um, I bought these from a company called Forella, but there's a number of Germany that just sell generic pants. If you happen to be of the thinner variety, not me, you can get integrated pants. I'm not sure what that would be in your respective languages, but it has these pads. It has all of these pads in these, so you only need to put on one thing. But with these, you just slip them over. Base, I'm wearing base layers because it allows gear to slip on and slide off. <laughs> Plus, you know, YouTube and various things that Europeans are okay with, but Americans are not. Like that. Comes up. The D-ring belt. Goes through, pull that back through, and you can just stuff this away. I will not be putting on a game uniform because my club keeps control of those, but I do have a relative, I have practice uniform. Okay. So we're going over the gear. These are the biggest thing that a bunch of people are going to have to get used to. They are shoulder pads. I have Zenith Element Hybrid Adult Medium. And yes, I had to order them from this. I ordered them from Germany, which imported them from the States. So that's why they're in inches. <laughs> if you get ones that are made here, they may have the centimeters on them like every normal person should have. But, you know, we deal with inches because we're dealing with an American sport. Many people like to put it on first, strap it up. Yeah, that's not great. I'm, I'm gonna show you here why. So here is my practice jersey. My team is blue and yellow. So I, since our offensive during, our, our offense during practice wears white, defense wears blue. Technically we have to wear not white. <laughs> there were multiple practices where I went to practice with black. <laughs> um, but after an injury where that jersey needed to be cut off of me, I had to get a new jersey. So I wound up picking blue. So 
So, ah, so you put the jersey on first. And you make sure that the front of the pads, which is, this is the back, this is the front. Most other time, here, here's some my old pads. Most of the time, the front of the pads will have a lace thing like this. Um, but again, you'll also notice that the straps go from the back to the front. Sometimes you'll have hard straps, sometimes you'll have stretchy straps. Uh, skill pads technically have more stretchy straps at times. So you want to make sure that the front of your jersey, which has usually a little V in it, is on the front side. Or things get a little weird. And what you do, when you're done with all that, is you get everything sorted around, and then, like this, looks funny, but they just slide right on. And you don't have to worry about having your pads on and then trying to get the jersey over it. This works really well on game days, especially if you happen to have tight fit uniforms, um, then you can just slip it on and off. So with my pads, I have a long grommeted strap, two, three, four, five, and I go to six and put that in. And you can just slide this through. Same thing on the other side. I mean, this is a typical belt. Everyone knows how to do this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you'll pretty much have whatever you want. I have adult medium and they're from Zenith. But you as a skill player or lineman may have larger ones. So now we have shoulder pads on. You know, and you can hit the shoulder pads and run into things. And this is what does a lot of your body protection. <laughs> so now you can see what the whole thing. So yeah, sometimes you can get a practice jersey that'll have your number on it because you feel special. But you know, at a practice thing, you're not really worried about much. <laughs> There's always going to be the mouth guard. I personally use a brand called Sisu. They do have a European website. You can go into the description below. You can find stuff on there. They look like this. I have blue and a yellow. Let's, let's contrast here something for a bit. So they're yellow and they mold around your teeth. They have instructions on how to do it. And you just put it in and you can talk. Most people have the original ones that you would use for pretty much any other impact sport. Some people actually wear mouth guards when they're skateboarding, for Christ's sake, in case they, you know, take a spill or something. Um, they're not uncommon. <laughs> mouth guards are sold all over the place. Some people wear them in soccer and rugby. Uh, that's probably a good thing. Most of this stuff is pretty good for rugby and the accessories part. After that, we're moving on to the key thing the football helmet. Mine is a Zenith, like the brand, Epic Plus Pro. This was actually through a sponsorship deal many years ago, and so it does not cost what you will find on a website. Um, also, they don't really ship to the thing. So you're probably gonna go for like a shut or various other football helmets. Your club most likely has a helmet for you to help with, and they can help you figure out where to get one in your respective country, such as like, <laughs> like Italy, there's probably distributors down there. And it seems funny, but it's got the chin thing and how you do this, how you put this on in general, because it's supposed to wrap around your head, is you reach and you kind of pull it out just a little bit. Not, not like, you know, try to hulk, pull it apart, but just a little bit to get it over your ears and it just slides right on. And then your chin strap comes around, snaps on, snaps on. And now, finally, aside from your actual cleats, I'll go over those in just a second, we have gloves. They're a little sticky. They're very similar to like goalie gloves for football or soccer. Um, they're just not as big, but they're very similar. Uh, linemen can probably get away with using those because they don't have to catch, but they're nice and padded. And so, I have slightly padded gloves from Cutters. Um, 
you guys can see that name right there, Cutters. There's a playlist down below and up there also. It goes to all the links. So yeah, see this? They stick. They're designed so that when you grab, when you catch the ball, it doesn't like slide through your hand. They have a little bit of tack. Okay, and finally, for like football, soccer, foosball, all that stuff, you can probably use regular cleats that you have from soccer. And there are benefits to what I personally call football, American football cleats. They look just like regular things, except not a lot of soccer cleats have these up front. And so you've got these up front because as you're playing this football, you are standing on the ground and tilted forward a bit more. In soccer, you're utilizing more of your foot to move around, whereas in football, especially at my position, I'm more forward. I want more grip on the front than I need in the back. So when I look around at like decathlon and stuff around here, I don't see a lot of the football cleats having the, a lot of front teeth. So I tend to use other ones that I get from the States. It's a bit more expensive, but to each their own. You can absolutely use thing. If you're a lineman, if you're trying out to be a lineman, you can probably use what I've seen at Decathlon is rugby cleats. They pr you probably need a little bit more grip than the big stakes that come out of the bottom of that one. But if you played rugby and you've got cleats from being in that sort of, in the scrum, you're gonna be fine working as a lineman. So yeah, that's pretty much that for everything. Um, if you have any questions, please comment below. I, hopefully I did a good job explaining this stuff about football <laughs> and its gear and all of its various wonderment. And uh, hopefully I will catch you guys in the comments, future videos, if you have any ideas. Again, this was designed for Europeans to show them how this sport functions as I'm trying to make this message out so that more people who feel like they can, you can play it. Um, it just does have a little bit of a monetary money investment because these pads, new pads, can cost well up into hundreds of euros and the helmet can be another hundreds of euros. Um, but again, most of your clubs are going to have loaners um, so you can utilize pads and helmets to see if you even really like the sport. But if you do, you know, then this is a good way to do this. And like I said, all the various gear stuff is labeled in a playlist above and below. And I'll catch you in future videos.